Hello and welcome to Wisdom and Productivity, the podcast of Dr. Efraim Martinez. I am a school principal in search of wisdom, and I have found productivity to be a great tool for success. Today, I'm so glad to be here. I have not talked to you in quite a while. Uh, I took a break over this summer to uh, reflect, to refresh my skills, tune up, to take a, a break of everything. And um, I'm happy to be back. Um, frankly, I have nothing to share. And um, I was internally debating between what is that I want to do for my podcast, Wisdom and Productivity, and what is it that I want to for the long term, right? So when I started the podcast, I thought uh, this is a great tool for me to express ideas. And I was planning to do a weekly show, sometimes do like a side gig. But the truth is that um, there are other priorities in my life that uh, have to take precedent, right? The number one priority, of course, is that to be of being a father, right? Being a father is uh, number one in my bucket list. I know that when I, I am in my deathbed, surrounded by the people that I love and love me, I know those are going to be the number one. Number two priority has to be to be a husband, right? Um, I have um, uh, this desire to ensure that um, I can give my wife the best life possible. And, um, and it goes beyond uh, economics. It's about love. It's about happiness. It's about finding true comfort. And that, of course, is not easy to find. It is always a constant effort to ensure that the partner that you have, the person that you love, feels grateful for, for having you because you're always trying to make it better and, and you get more glows than you get your grows. Then, of course, is um, my profession, right? Uh, I have a, a true vocation to serve others and I have... In order to, to satisfy this urge of serving others, I selected to be an educator. Uh, I began as a teacher, but uh, I really wanted to be a principal from the beginning. And uh, I finally got there, right? And sometimes it is so, so difficult to forget how much it took you to get where you are at right now. And uh, I, this summer was great to re reflect on my practice, hone my skills, sharpen my skills. I read a lot. I, I met with all my supervisors. I reread my evaluation and, 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 and the things. And I have a, a better understanding of my new school district. Uh, for those who are new to the show, Wisdom and Productivity, I was a principal in a large urban area for six years and I just began a suburban area and um, definitely what got me there is not gonna get me here. Uh, and that's a book that uh, my boss recommended that I read and one of the books I read this summer was that one. And uh, it was truly transformational because um, one lesson I have learned from moving from district one to district two is that we think that whatever we did in district one that work, we just have to copy paste it and do it the same. No, 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 no. Uh, you have to start from the beginning. And now that I know that I feel that I'm gonna have a way better year two than year one. Don't get me wrong, it was not a bad year. A lot of grows, uh, a glows, some grows. Uh, some very specific growths that I need to work on to improve my skill. And, and I trust that uh, year two is going to be the best year yet. So before I continue with the uh, title of the show, uh, let's give a good 
Uh, hello and saludos to our friends of the Teach Better community. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at www.teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com. Now let's get back to the episode. Okay, I'm looking forward for tonight. Uh, they have a Facebook Live event uh, for members only, so request to be a member. Uh, and let's see how it goes. First time I'm going to attend. I specifically open a Facebook page so I can join my friends of the Teach Better community. So let's begin with today's show. And today's show is titled Towards an Altruistic Effort to Elevate Students' Confidence. What does this mean? So um, we're going to start our school year, and I don't want to, to emphasize in that we're going to face an unprecedented challenge because every year, every day, there are going to be unprecedented challenges that we must be prepared to tackle. So uh, it is important for me to have a specific uh, way of intellectualizing how I'm going to conduct myself in order to, to have the best impact as possible. So altruism is when we act to promote someone else's welfare, even at risk or cost to ourselves. Whew, okay, so um, in the education field, it is so important that we have the perspective and the concept that the life of the children depend on many aspects on what we do in the classroom because they are observing us, they are listening to us, they are feeling what we transmit. If we use affective words with sincerity, the students are going to feel it. But if we use affective words, insincerely or sarcastically, students are going to catch it like that. And that's when with the teacher and the educator loses. We lose the opportunity to support the student, to uplift her or himself to have a better life. So it is an important tenant. This is a quote that I saw this morning it is an important tenet of effective altruism is to focus on maximizing the good each of us can do in our lifetimes and the lifetimes of generations to come. Even if we can actually see the good we are accomplishing firsthand. So it is, it is, it is such a complicated thing to go day by day to school and year by year and not seeing perhaps the results that we want to see. You have to know that each student is like a, any, other, any other one of us. We are like a tree. and We are just putting water on those seeds. Those seeds are already there. We're just putting the water, the sunlight, the care the special seeds so the tree or the plant can grow even stronger and better. We're not going to see the end results, but we have to trust that when we do our very best, we are able to do what is our part to ensure that tree grows fructiferously. The other day I went to a training called the Orange Frog and uh, the instructors were amazing. And one of the things that I learned is that there was a Gallup poll of 230,000 employees and they requested uh, their opinion on how many of them were happy engage and engage, how many of them were unhappy and not engage, and how many of them were actively unhappy or disengage. What is the difference? So actively engage the people who are like 
in front of the road. They're always going forward. They're envisioning the future. They don't look, do not look behind or the past only to reflect. Those are the people who are happily engaged. The people who are unhappy and not engaged. Think about the people that are like in the middle. The people that um, just do as much as necessary and not more. Who are not sure if they should shine and be like the happy and engaged people in the front. And then we also have always a group of uh, ideally never the majority. We have a group who is actively unhappy, actively disengaged. They are actively working towards eliminating uh, the hope of actual learning or actual, uh, I should not say learning, actual success in the business world. So let's think about it for a second. In each classroom, there are always going to be students in these three levels. The student who sits in the front always participates, always bring all the materials. The parents are already heavily involved in supporting the student, right? Anthony Mohammed calls them the buffet student. The student that knows how to behave when they go to the buffet. They have often two parents who are nurturing, who support them and take them to activities after school. They travel, they take special classes of math and reading and science. They go to museums. Um, their parents are uh, educated. Uh, they have opportunities. They know how to behave in that buffet. That's going to be the 13% of your students. Now, you have the students with no buffet experience, the students who are going to make your job as an educator a little bit more complicated. They have not been taught how to behave in the buffet. It's not to their fault. Often parents in this category have more than one job. And when the kid leaves this home, Parents arriving or leaving or just exhausted. And sometimes when they go home, there's nobody else. So they have quite a difficulty to be, have experience in that buffet. And that is the unhappy and or not engaged. The student who it takes a little bit longer to get them excited, to get them pumped for the actual learning. And then finally, you have the actively unhappy, the disengaged, the student that seems to be ready to give you a tough time, to contradict what you are saying, to call the attention. And often this student is the student that is mostly exposed to trauma. So what is it that we do as educators to address these students, well, let me start with this. Hopefully, in your school, everybody is in the category of the happy engaged. That the Gallup poll says that is 13% of the people in that corporation or association. We can think and imagine a classroom. 13% of your students are going to be experiencing the buffet. They are going to be stellar students and they are going to make you feel that you are doing such a great job in integrating them. Now, we have 63% of the students or the people that are in that corporation who are in the middle. That's the big bulk. That's where we need to target most of our energy in order to bring what is best in them, right? And often that student lacks confidence because when they see the happily and engaged student continuously succeeding in the class, succeeding in assessment, getting all the praise from their teachers, the student is debating between doing more effort or not. Is it worth it? Is it, am I good enough to get there? And working in the confidence in those students is a primordial 
responsibility for all educators. We must concentrate in those students. Now we're gonna have 24% of the students or less or more that are going to be actively challenging you and you must embrace it. You must embrace it because people come to school to learn from their mistakes. People come to school to get your specialty as the educator, the specialist in pedagogy, to explain and illuminate the brain of our students to make better decisions and to have a better life. So I want to ask you, what kind of educator, principal, associate, assistant principal, teacher, teacher assistant, et cetera, et cetera, psychologist, social worker, counselor, nurse, where are you located? Are you part of that 13% of educators who are every day ready to go and tackle and, and learn from mistakes and and concentrate on what we can focus instead of concentrating in the things that we cannot impact? Are you the type of employee who might not serve students well by just doing the bare minimum, by not caring for what the student feels or is going through? Are you the type of educator who is going to go head to head Every time a student fails to meet the expectation that a buffet student should have. Because that is it. If we truly believe in equity, we need to meet the student where they are at. And some students come with the buffet experience and some students don't. Think about it. What is your expectation when you go and attend to a concert, when you attend to a game that you pay money, that you made a line, that you're paying for parking, that you're having all these people around you, you're sitting in a little seat, you want that game, you want that concert to be spectacular. The same expectations we have when we are driving a loved one towards an emergency room in a hospital. When those doors of the hosp emergency room hospital open, what do you want to see? What is the expectation that you have for the physicians, the nurses, the assistants, the security guards, and anyone involved in the hospital? For sure, for your loved one, you expect the absolute best. You expect the best service. You expect each employee to be in their best um, uh, health, on their best mood, because they have to be completely focused on the patient. That is the person that you love. But in school, sometimes we forget that. We forget that each student, each person, each moment can have a long lasting impact because of what we do. We must never forget why we got into this. We got into the field of education to serve each student, not only the ones who did homework and have buffet parents, we were there to serve all the students, to elevate their confidence so they know that they can make mistakes. And after a no, there is a yes. So they can learn that when they climb a mountain and they get to the hill, they realize it's another mountain to climb because that is life. Always trying to find a way to improve ourselves and be better than we were yesterday.
but don't worry. With time, the panic will disappear after your repeated exposure of giving the best performance every day. You did not sign up to be on the bench. You want to be on the court. You want to be on the pitch. You want to be scoring the points, scoring the goals. You want to be able to bring success. And for you not to be on the bench, you have to bring your best. That is all for today. It is always a pleasure to share ideas here. Welcome to season four, episode one of Wisdom and Productivity. Have a fantastic weekend. I am going to go for a run and get ready because tomorrow we begin the show. Peace and calm. Thank you for listening to Wisdom and Productivity, the podcast of Dr. Epaim Martinez. Chulu. And Ella's that production. Chulu out.